Have you ever questioned the nature of your reality? Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, thank you if you subscribed. If you haven't subscribed and you like this kind of thing, please subscribe and like the video, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm going to do a video now on Andrew Kaufman. So this is an author that I discovered a little while back and uh, I wanted to read more, immediately wanted to read more by him after the first book I read. But after the three books I've read, I'm going to talk about in this video, the first book I read is my favourite one out of the three. He's written six books. He started writing or started publishing his writings in 2003. So a relatively new author. But uh, he's Canadian. Quite different to uh, a lot of other writers, I'd say. He's got a, quite a unique take on his own particular quirky, absurd, surrealist um, diversion of reality, while also rooting a lot of his plots and characters in a reality, as something that we can recognise as being our reality. So it's a kind of a mix, his, his um, general style and his plots, certainly from the three books I've read, are a mix of this very real personalities, very real concerns, very real feelings with this surreal, absurdist surroundings, this sort of plot driven, the, the plot that's driven by a an absurd world. So uh, I'll start, I'll do it in order of what I've read. So I'll start with the best one out of the three, I think, and I think it's, it was so good. And I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to read it a number of times because it's incredibly short. And that is this one, All My Friends Are Superheroes. All My Friends Are Superheroes is literally about 100 pages long. I think I read it in about an hour and a half. I was waiting for my doctor's appointment, went down the beach and thought, um, I'm going to just read it, see how far I get when I read the whole thing before my appointment. So that was cool. And uh, I, I really, 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 really enjoyed it. I think it's, well, I'll tell you the plot and then I'll tell you about what I think about the way it's written. So as soon as the book starts, you're right in the action. I mean, this is obviously very short, so it's going to rattle along at a fast pace. But right at the beginning, it establishes the fact that Tom is on a plane with the person he's just married, who he is described as the perfectionist. She is a superhero called The Perfectionist. As you read the book, you realise that what he's doing, what Andrew Kaufman's doing, is describing everybody as a superhero for um, reasons of um, expanding on how we consider ourselves and how we consider the people we know and how we consider mundane things that are actually quite magical. So that'll come to you when you read it. But there are tons and tons of superheroes in this and they're all... Um, bizarrely described their superhero trait is a little bit unusual so her the, so he calls his wife the perfectionist and that's because her speciality what she is a perfectionist with is her sense of order and make sure that everything is organized properly and everything's planned properly and, and everything's in its place and if you can get what I'm saying there as far as it's not a, a normal superhero trait but he's making the mundane magical. You can see where you might go with this um, by the end of it. There's a kind of a lesson to be learned with this. But anyway, Tom is invisible to his girlfriend. And this is because, oh, sorry, to his wife. And this is because on their wedding day, her ex-boyfriend called Hypno whispered to her um, and convinced her that Tom was invisible, or, the, or not convinced that it was invisible, but made sure that she couldn't see him. And he's spent the time since then trying to convince her that he's with her and he's obviously her husband and part of her life, blah, blah, blah. And um, what you get is this very quirky setup, but also an exploration of, of love and longing and companionship with these funny stories about these different superheroes and that kind of thing. I'll just show you... Um, a page, yeah, I mean this here, whoops, um, you've got, uh, what was it, Falling Girl, The Battery, The Couch Surfer, The Stress Bunny, and The Dancer. So these are very short, very, very, very short descriptions of superheroes. And that's 
kind of um, peppered through the book. So you get these different superheroes, and some of it's funny, some of it just makes you think, some of it builds up to this general point he's trying to make about what we're like as people. Um, and I just think it's really nicely written. What's this one? This is another page where he starts talking about different superheroes. The Frog Kisser, uh, Fifth Business, The Seeker, The Projectionist, and The Chip. Um, and again, these are different, really short descriptions of what these superheroes are like while he's developing this plot where Tom is trying to become visible to his wife after being tricked by Hypno. Um, and when I finished reading it, I had this big grin on my face and I thought, I see what you did there, Mr. Kaufman, and I like it. So very short, it's not going to change your world necessarily. It might change, I think books like this do enrich your life because they do enrich your feelings about your relationships and and um, so I do think it, it, it's more than just a superficial book. But clearly, there's not a lot of character development. And it's not a hugely epic plot. But, yeah, I think it's really worth reading. If you can find it, definitely, you know, it's not, it's not sadly going to take up much time. But I thought it was really, really good. And I was really impressed with it. And uh, this was my first go at Andrew Kaufman. I was curious by the um, title when I found it. Uh, mentioned somewhere online so I thought I'd give it a go bought it really really liked it and then thought well I'll read some more by him so he's written six books and I've read two others the next one I read was A Tiny Wife and this book has illustrations throughout the thing to kind of um, expand on the plot um, they're really nicely designed illustrations <laughs> uh, and again this is a very very quirky absurd this plot fits really well with the other one the tiny wife, you can probably imagine what's happening here, but the reason why his wife becomes tiny is quite cool. So basically it's, a, it's, it's all set up right at the beginning with a bank robbery. And the bank robber doesn't want to take their money, uh, the people that are in the bank. He tells everyone in the bank to give him something that has a lot of sentimental value. And he's, it's basically some sort of weird curse. And they, give, they all give him something of sentimental value. And everyone that's in that robbery, everyone that's a victim of that robbery, through the next few weeks, something weird happens to them that's based around that thing that was given away and something about their own fears or their own hang-ups or their own, past, uh, their, their own thoughts about their past, that kind of thing. Uh, so a couple of examples of that. Um, it's not a spoiler because it's literally in the first 10, 20 pages. You've got uh, one woman who has a tattoo of a lion, and that lion, that tattoo, chases her around the city and attacks her. So that was clearly a little bit absurd, a little bit strange, a little bit surreal. And you've got someone else who's a woman whose husband becomes a snowman. And uh, <laughs> uh, that kind of thing happens. And principally, with this main character, his wife starts shrinking. It's kind of alarming and kind of scary for them, but it's not really written in a shocking sort of horrific kind of way one of the interesting things about how he writes is the characters do seem to be quite uh it's almost like they're used to reality bending like that you know so there isn't there is there is shock but there isn't the oh my god this couldn't happen in my reality kind of shock it's just oh no it's happened to me kind of shock <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you know that adds to the quirkiness of it really so his his wife is is shrinking very very fast and she quite quickly in the in the plot she becomes kind of pocket size and he carries her around in his in his jacket pocket and they've got a son and his son kind of gets a little bit upset by it but also talks to her and she sits on his shoulder um and you've got that sort of quite a, an amusing kind of element to it to the how the actual scenes play out when she's tiny but amongst that you've got all these other people that are in the support group from this bank robbery um, that talk to each other, that are also having these weird experiences. So, I, so again, it's very short. I'm going to say something general about what his points are, I think, later on when I've talked about the third book. But I do think the ending of this was a bit disappointing. The ending of the All My Friends Are Superheroes was really nice, and it was a really satisfying ending, and I, and I, ended, and I closed the book with a big grin on my face. I didn't really like the ending of this one because it seemed a bit abrupt. It seemed like the last few pages seemed to be um, trying to 
end the book quicker, I think. So I'm, I'm not sure what he was thinking with that, but definitely the end of the, the other book was better. But there's lots going for it. I, th I think, uh, again, I like the, what he's doing as far as the way he turns a strange and odd situation into a narrative. And he clearly is exploring love and companionship like he is in the first book um and you know some of the some of the things that happen to these people that are victims of the bank robbery is quite funny and yeah so again another one that i'd recommend um and you know, that was the second book i read by him and i thought yeah i do like this guy and the fact he's written six books is quite nice because i i've only heard about uh four of them so there's another two for me to root out which is nice so the third book i've read which i've just finished tonight is Born Weird. So this was a little longer one. This is more like a normal size book. The others are even shorter than novellas, I'd say. Uh, this is like uh, 300 pages. Is it 300? About 200, 270, 280 pages. So short novel, granted, but more like a novel length. Born Weird. So this is about the Weird family. And um, it's probably obvious... I guess you could probably say that he's aware of his reputation as a writer and, and what the books have as a running theme or a running style. Because now it's just like, I'm just going to call this Born Weird. And all the characters are called Weird. It's a family where that's their surname. And uh, it kind of centres around five siblings. So they're brothers and sisters and they're all adults but they've all been damaged by this thing that happened when they were younger. And their whole family's kind of damaged by various aspects of that. And they were cursed by their grandmother when they were younger. And their curses are also kind of blessings as well. Which, in the book, he calls them blessings. So, obviously, a cross between a curse and a blessing. So they have these blessings... And they're just to kind of add to that idea of how he writes in this sort of quirky style. I'll tell you what some of the um, the um, blessings are. So, um, so Annie Weird is the grandmother, and she gave her five grandchildren these blessings. Uh, so Richard's curse blessing is that he would always keep safe. Abba, she'd always have hope. Lucy would never get lost. Kent would be able to beat anyone in a fight. And Angie, who really is the main character, really, uh, she would always forgive instantly. So that's the bl these are blessings and curses. So clearly, this is not you're going to be invisible or you know you can read people's minds something like that. This is you'll never get lost. Um, you're always going to have hope. You'll always forgive. These are psychological traits that affect how they interact with other people, how they deal with um, their relationships. And that is what is at the centre of this book. So basically, right at the beginning, their grandmother tells Angie, who's the one that always forgives, that she's dying and she wants them all to come together to visit her so that she can release them from their curses. And she needs them to be there to do that. And there's only so much time because she knows when she's going to go. So it becomes Angie trying to get back with everybody. There's a little bit of a road trip element to it. And in that road trip section of the book, there's loads of exploration of their own relationships and how they feel about each other, how they treat each other, how especially how they treat Angie and how they feel about their grandmother and their mother and their father. So their father did something quite serious when they were young, which affected them all, and you hear more about that through the book. And when they do visit the grandmother, that takes the plot in a different direction. And by the end of the book, you can see what Andrew Kaufman's doing, and it's definitely an exploration on relationships within the family and the brothers and sisters have a very clear dynamic in the middle of the book you know with this road trip section 
where they're kind of at each other a lot and that and that is really clear how they have certain expectations of each other certain judgments they make of each other certain ways they haven't really let go of some things those, those kind of things as well as these curses that are kind of compounding all that so by the end of it because of what happens in the plot they have new understandings they've got a different way of out, uh, looking at things and a different way of looking at the past and a different way of looking about the, their parents but most importantly a different way of looking at the decisions they've made at themselves and their close relationships so even though he writes in a very simple style in all three of these books he's tried to explore how we interact with each other and how we deal with relationships with loved ones so um, this is less weird it's less quirky it's less strange it's less surreal but he's still using uh, these psychological traits rather than actual curses that you would see in any other book as a plot device to then analyze discuss relationships so really interesting writer i think and uh, someone if you think this sounds curious interesting check him out um i think this is the best one out of the three anyway so you could start with that and see how you get on see if you like the way he writes it's very it's very um i think it's pretty subtle what he's doing and partly because he's quite direct with how he writes there's not an excessive amount of um, internal dialogue by the characters thinking about everything all the time so it kind of plays out in the way they change their actions or their dialogue with other people so you know that there's not it's not overly poetic but i think he, he does have a lot to say but in a quite a subtle way so you might miss it you might just think it's funny um but i do think he's trying to say something about the way we treat each other so yeah that was all my friends are superheroes really really good and a nice introduction to the tiny wife which is really good but i was disappointed by the ending and born weird which um i did enjoy but it didn't have the same uh delight in the absurd as the other two did it's a little bit more straight so the quirkiness is is revved down to a low level and uh, it still is quite odd in many ways you know but yeah an author that i am really enjoying and i found a, i sort of found him uh, randomly so i don't know how famous he is but i haven't heard anyone talk about him at all so i thought it was worth talking about him on the channel so have you read any of these books have you read this book let me know in the comments thanks a lot bye What it's like to be you You sit upon your high chair